Okay, so look at Link there. He looks very jagged. All the edges are very jagged. So if I go into the graphics section, and then if I scroll down, we just make it six times native. And then click OK. It clears it up. And look how beautiful that looks. It looks so much better. It's actually my be a better way to play the game than on the 3DS itself for me at the minute. So the 3DS eShop is shutting down. I thought it'd be the time to finally dump all of my 3DS games and get them working on the PC emulator that is Citra. Citra is a 3DS emulator that I tried out a few years ago and it wasn't very good. But with the news that the 3DS eShop is shutting down, I thought I'd give it another go and the results were very surprising and it is actually a brilliant emulator. Now, I've had some brilliant performance in The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds, Super Mario 3D Land, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and Mario Kart 7. But that's another video for another day. Today's video is going to be showing you how to download, install, set up and get the best out of Citra emulator on your PC. There is an Android version of this emulator and I will be doing a video on that so hit that subscribe button if you're interested in that but let's just get into this tutorial but before i do please hit that like button if you do find this information useful it does help my channel grow so the first thing to do is to click the link in the description down below to take you to citra-emu.org and this is the official page for the emulator itself click download here and there will be a option that will auto detect that you are on windows windows x64 if you're downloading it for mac or linux you're going to want to click other platforms and click your desired location and for android you can get it on the google play store i don't recommend trying to download if you're on mac os because mac has currently discontinued the use of opengl which is what citra is currently using there is no vulcan support as of yet but i have heard in the pipeline that developmental builds are being released with vulcan in mind so mac may be back on the cards in the future so click download for windows x64 and it'll download this citra setup.exe double click it and it'll open the setup for citra click next then choose your installation folder i'm going to install this on my c drive click next now this is where things get a little bit interesting we have citra nightly and citra canary now citra nightly is the most official tested version it's the one that's going to have the best stability as far as i'm concerned and citra canary is the in developmental version i'm going to click that as well because i want to have both versions of it installed it's going to be two separate apps and citra canary i recommend using it if you're having problems with certain games something's not working that well i'm going to test it out with metal gear solid snake eater see if they've got any improvements on that but it is going to be untested and there are going to be possible problems with it it is not a band-aid fix for everything it's just a way of testing out in developmental features and to see what citra nightly is going to have in the future but citra nightly is definitely the go-to version i'm installing citra canary because i want to have a look at what's going on in the development as well i am always a fan of beta testing for people Click next, click that you accept the licenses, it's just a J GNU general public license. If you don't want to accept this license, don't accept the license and don't install the emulator. Click next again, click next again and it's ready to install and I'll click install and it'll start downloading the latest build for me. So that took roughly two to three minutes and we'll click next again, click finish and now Citra has been installed onto my PC. I click the start button and there you can see Citra Nightly and Citra Canaria are both recently added there. Or I can go to all apps, scroll down, and find Citra, there's Canary, and Nightly. So I'm going to open Citra Nightly, because that's the one that we're going to be using. And when you first open Citra, it's going to ask you to find your games list. It's probably preferable to have all of your games in one folder. So I'm going to double click on that. Go to where my games are, which are in the desktop. 3DS, I'm going to select that folder. And there are all my games. What I like about Citra is on the games list, it does have a compatibility section. So I can see that Ocarina of Time 3D runs okay. Mario Kart 7 runs great. And Splinter Cell 3D, which is, I'm pretty good. That doesn't work, but that only goes to the intro and the menu. And also Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater has a bad rating, which is something I'm going to test out on Citra Nightly to see if I can get that working. But I highly doubt it. The last time I got to the main part where I play the game and it stopped playing. Now, I currently have mine set up in dark mode, and all of this has been set up before by me, so I'm going to go through all the configuration of how to set it up as well. So if we go to the emulation, click configure, and then we have this menu here. So if I go to the UI section, we have different themes. Now, the one that you're going to start with is light, which is this one, but I much prefer, like everyone these days, dark mode is in. So I went to that, and I like midnight blue. So I'm going to go midnight blue, colourful, because I like colourful. So this is the icon sizes, which size you want these icons to be at. And then how you want, 
how you want it to be presented with a title name and your interface language and things like that. Because I'm in South Korea when I first opened this, it opened in Korean, but I'm gonna change it to English because that's the language that I speak. In the general section, there is a section called emulation speed. So if you want in the games at 200 times speed, you can do. And then in the web section, there's this thing called Citroen Web Service that if you want to play multiplayer games, which I'll show you how to do in a second, you're gonna to need to sign up to Citrus Web Service. So if you click sign up here, it'll take you to the website. And I'll leave a link to this website in the description down below. You can create your own ID and login token for playing multiplayer games. Also, when you first open, it's going to ask you if you want to share any anonymous usage data with the Citra team. I always click yes because any of the crash data and stuff like that is going to help the development of the program. But if you're not happy with sending your data, you can just click this off in this menu here. Or you can click no when you first open up the emulator. We go to the system section. This is where we set up our emulated 3DS. So you can set up things like play coins, our username birthdays, things like that, all the things that are going to be in the 3DS system, and also the CPU clock speed, which is something I don't recommend messing with. Just keep it at 100%. We can also set up a camera if any of the games that you want to have a camera, and you can click a little preview there to see if it's the camera that you want. And then we go down to the graphics section. Now, this is where we can set up our resolution to make games look smooth. Now, I usually set this to around 6 times native to 1440p. You can set it all the way to 10 times native, but that's just going to be taxing and it's not going to be any it's not going to be any better i'll show you the difference between those later but i usually said it's a six times native and the screen layout here is where you can set the two screens whether you want them side by side top and bottom or if you want the big screen to be larger i'll show you those i'll show you those when we get into a game and i always click use custom textures and preload custom textures because i like to use custom textures and i'm going to do a video on showing you how to get custom textures on this as well when i figure it out now in the advanced section some games might not be running well and as i've always said emulation will never be 100 percent but you might be running into a few problems and this is where you'll find things that you can click on and off to try and make it a little bit better what i highly recommend doing is if you have a problem with a game type that name type the name of that game into google and the word citra next to it and check to see if anyone's having any issues the same. Just type the problem that you're having and someone will either recommend turning off use disk shader or turning off enable hardware, hardware renderer with that game. If we go to audio, I usually keep it on HLE fast, but if I'm feeling confident and a game is running well, then I will change it to LLE, which will be a lot more accurate, but it'll be more taxing on the CPU. But because I record my game play at the same time as playing it, my CPU and GPU are doing about five different things at the same time so i'll keep it on hle fast next we move on to controls now this is where we're going to set up the controls to use for our 3ds games and they are automatically set up for the keyboard i'm going to be using my xbox control for this so i can use this auto map feature so if i press auto map and then i press ok and then i press a button on my controller it's going to auto map every button to my controller now there is a problem if you're using the xbox controller because a is set to button one but button one is b because of the way Nintendo and Xbox works, A is B, B is A. They have A, B, X, and Y in different places. And I don't like that. I like to, when I see A on the screen, I press A on my controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the face buttons where it says A. I'm going to press A, B. I'm going to press B on my controller. X, I'm going to press X on my controller. And Y, I'm going to press Y on my controller. You might like it with Nintendo way in that way. Just keep it the way it is. But just to let you know, if you want to change any of these controls, you can just click on where it says and press the button that you want to and it will map it out for you the, the auto map function does work very well with everything else there's also motion controls in the bottom left here but i haven't found any games that really use motion controls so far so if anyone wants to know about motion controls let me know down in the comments let me know what game it is that you're playing and i'll i'll figure it out and i'll make a video about that and that's it we're configured and set up to go before we start i'm going to show you the multiplayer options so if you go to the multiplayer section in the top corner here and click browse public game lobby you're able to see all the public game lobbies that are available this bit here which says preferred game is the game that they prefer to play in multiplayer but if you click on this little arrow here it'll tell you what they are playing at this moment in time you'll have to enter the lobby it'll open up a chat and you can chat to the person and you can play games if you want to it'll tell you how many players are in the games as well and how many people are in the lobbies you can also set it so that it only shows people that have games that you own so these are people that have Legends of Zelda Triforce Heroes and are waiting for people to play Triforce Heroes with them. So currently these guys are playing Super Smash Brothers, but I'm guessing as soon as they get a third, they're going to play some Triforce Heroes. You can also set up your own multiplayer lobby by clicking Create Room. You can set that to Public or Unlisted, and then you just click Host Room, and there you go. I've currently got a public room available. And then to leave the room, click Leave the Room, 
and there we go one more thing before i start a game is i'm going to show you what happens if you've dumped a game and it has been encrypted so if we go file and i click load files i've got this version of ocarina of time it says your rom is encrypted please follow the guidelines to redump your game cartridges or install titles i don't want to go through the process of redumping this game so so what you do is if you click the link in the description down below it'll take you to this github page on this github page there is a forum post which is currently there and you just click the link here click the link and it'll download this batch cia 3 dscryptorzip right click extract all click extract and inside the folder will look something like this so now what i need to do is to get this version of legend of zelda ocarina of time drop it into this folder make sure you close citra before you do this as well and then click batch cia 3 dscryptorbat and just let it do its thing it's going to take a couple of minutes oh it's finished click enter press any key and we have two files there now this one is legend of zelda ocarina of time 3d decrypted so if i go back to citra and then i click file load file i'll find that exact file just to show you that it works i'll go to 3ds this is the decrypted one and there we go okay so now we are in citra and as you can see i've got it set up with a large screen here and my touch screen is in the right corner in the bottom of the emulator there's things you can check like the speed of the game the frames per second and the frame render speed now if you click view go to screen layout and we change it to the default setup this is the default setup it has a screen here and a much bigger touch screen at the bottom and you can use your mouse on the touch screen so as you can see i'm moving if i click here i can then no never change never change it from link so now i can use the touch screen here and click ok yeah, that's okay. I prefer, you can go through a bunch of these. There's single screen layouts for games that don't really use the second screen. Large screen. So this will have the touch screen in the bottom corner here, which is the one that I prefer. Because then I can just keep it in the keep it in the keep my mouse in the bottom right corner. But some games do require the touch screen to be a bit bigger. It's also side by side, which has the two screens side by side. Exactly what it says on the tin, like Ronso. Or you can have it as separate windows, which puts them both into separate windows. But I also don't like this version. So I'm going to pop it on the large screen. And then you can also set it to full screen. But for some reason, OBS doesn't record it in full screen. So I'm not going to show you that. Okay, so look at Link there. He looks very jagged. All the edges are very jagged. So if I go into the graphics section. And then if I scroll down, we just make it six times native. And then click OK. It clears it up, and look how beautiful that looks. It looks so much better. It's actually my be a better way to play the game than on the 3DS itself for me at the minute. And like I said before, I'll show you one more time. We go to configure, go to the graphics, and we change it from six times to ten times native. There's not much of a difference as far as that's concerned. But if I go to my CPU usage, and my GPU usage is currently running at eighty-one percent, and if I turn that down. I'll wake up in a second. Don't you worry about it. Click configure. Go back to the graphics. Change it from 10 times to 6 times, which isn't. And then my GPU usage will start to. See, it's starting to go down already. We're currently back down to 48%. For, for less than minimal gains. Also change the background color here as well. So I've got mine currently set to blue. But if you want, you can set it to black, blue, pink, whatever you want here. So we're currently getting 60 FPS on this game. It runs quite well. There is going to be stuttering. Like I said, emulation is never 100% perfect. I'm currently using a RTX 3060, which isn't like the best graphics card around, but it's pretty decent. And the game usually flows quite beautifully for a while, but there is always going to be some form of stuttering every now and then again. Especially when you first play a game because all the shaders need to like compile themselves together. And as the game goes, it's the same with all emulation. It currently only runs on OpenGL at the minute as well, so I'm hoping that we're going to get Vulkan support in the future. I've heard a rumour, and if there is Vulkan support in the future, I'll definitely be making a video on that. But this is definitely running smooth and clean. It's one of my favourite 2D Zelda games. I remember playing this on a plane to Hong Kong pretty much the entire flight. 
I completed the game within the flight. I think it was like a 16 hour flight. And I'm looking forward to playing it again. This time in the comfort of my own home on a big screen. A couple of things. Let me know down in the comments which 3DS games are your favourite 3DS games. Let me know down in the comments what you think about Citrus Citra Emulator. Have you been using it? And will you be checking it out after this video? I, for one, am extremely excited about playing a couple of these games again. And getting my way through and finally finishing The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. Hopefully with this multiplayer mode I'm going to be able to find a team of people to play it with. Because the single player version of that game can be very frustrating. That's it for this video. If you've liked this video please hit that like button. If you're new here please consider subscribing to the channel. I really do want to make this channel grow. I want to give you as many emulation tutorials as possible. Let me know down in the comments if there's any emulators you want me to do tutorials on. And just leave the word sausage in. Leave the word sausage in the chat, uh, in the comment section. Leave the word sausage in the comment section because I know that 99% of my viewers don't watch to the end. In fact, Drew got the word sausage, so I'm going to use a different word this time. Uh, let's let's go with the word. What word should I use? Leave the word. <laughs> leave the word. Multi-purpose cleaner in the comments section down below if you're still here. Uh, and as always, don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs>